this year we've had an absolute slew of abominable, terrible $70 release games. Firstly, we had Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which was an absolute flop. It now has less than 1,000 concurrent players like two weeks after its release, even though it's supposedly a live service game, which is incredibly embarrassing. And then now we have Skull and Bones, which is a game by Ubisoft, the same developers of Assassin's Creed. And this is an important detail, but that will become apparent soon. So let's get straight into it. So firstly, let's talk about why it's important that this is the same developers of Assassin's Creed. So about 10 years ago, Assassin's Creed Black Flag came out, which was a Assassin's Creed game based around being a pirate in, I think, the Caribbean. And it had a really advanced, nuanced boarding mechanic. This is also seen in more recent Assassin's Creed games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which obviously isn't about piracy, but there are boat mechanics in the game and you can board enemy ships and fight the enemies. And that is a really, really good detail that they've added in there. However, Skull and Bones doesn't seem to have that. And that's really confusing. Bear in mind, it's the first quadruple A video game according to Ubisoft, but it doesn't even have this basic mechanic. It's just a cutscene that lasts about like 10, 15 seconds, and it feels very empty and shallow to play. And I'm not saying that from personal experience because I'm not wasting $70 on the game, but from what I've seen and what I've watched of people playing it, it really is just absolutely shit. It's awful, and I can't understand how that's being labelled as quadruple A because their previous games that are triple A have that boarding mechanic, so if it doesn't even have the bare minimum for what a pirate game should be, then how is that a new industry standard of quadruple A. It's confusing. And it reminds me of like a, a meme I've seen recently where it's like every masterpiece has its cheap knockoff and that's like Sea of Thieves compared to Skull and Bones. And to be honest I was really excited and eager to see what Ubisoft could do with a pirate game. However they've absolutely butchered it because I really like the boarding and fighting mechanic that, were, that was in both Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Assassin's Creed Black Flag. But they've just really fucks it and it's it's not even it's just not worth the price truthfully in this video i was going to look at the steam reviews but annoyingly epic games have paid for exclusivity so it's not on steam which means people can't review it openly because epic games does not have that as an option nor does the ubisoft store which is really really annoying because you don't really get to see an average criticism of the game which is such a pain in the ass so a lot of what i'm looking at comes from the expression of people that have actually played the game on YouTube and streamed it as well. But one of the biggest complaints is the fact that the game just feels absolutely lifeless. People are constantly saying that it just feels so empty and dull and that it, there's no life to the game. And I can understand that from what I've seen, the NPCs are very boring. There's hardly any detail and story to it, which really does suck. And that is one of the major complaints in the first few hours of gameplay, that it just feels fucking empty, truthfully which is a huge disappointment, and I was eager to buy the game, but with a $70 price tag, that shit is absolutely not worth it. This may sound really fucking dumb, but it's still a big issue. It feels just like a fucking waypoint simulator. You're going from point A to point B to get blank, to get X, Y, Z material, to get this to do that. And I understand that's like going to be the core of a lot of the gameplay loop, but it just feels so monotonous, and like your task is just to travel around. There's no difficulty in obtaining these things you're meant to be looking for and then to even make that worse and top that off on how fucking terrible it is they've basically made it so that there's no sense of direction or urgency they've given the game no sense of adventure you're just doing this and this and th there's not a reason why it's oh you need to do that to do this and then you get that on top of that these people that are setting you the quest like the npcs there's no story or reason for why. You want a bit of direction for it. I think it's such a shame that Ubisoft have really butchered this because previous games, like all the recent Assassin's Creed games like Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla, the sense of direction and story in them, I really fucking like them. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I replayed that recently. There's a cult that you have to take down, like a cult in the Greek world called the Cult of Cosmos, and you have to take down all these cultists to finally get to the final cultist which is the leader, and the issue is, is that they have not infused Skull and Bones with this 
sense of story and wonder like they have Assassin's Creed, which is such a shame because they do have the potential to do it, they just haven't executed it. But it's not all doom and gloom, thankfully. And I know I may be having this doomer attitude, but there is some good that comes from this. And this is a point made by Moist Critical in his most recent video about the state of gaming in 2024. So props to him for this thought, but let's get into it. Basically, people are voting with their wallets. A lot of people aren't paying for these $70 games that are effectively shit up the wall. What these companies are doing is they are literally taking a shit, throwing it at the wall, and <laughs> fucking expecting it to stick. And it doesn't. People don't pay for these games, and if they do, they get a refund because they realise they're utterly shit. And what it does is it allows smaller devs to come in and make better games for less. There have been many prime examples over the past three years. The biggest is probably Among Us as probably outdated as that is to say, but that is just true. It was made by a small, small company and it absolutely blew up. The same goes for Lethal Company, which is a very similar style, I suppose, in terms of the genre that it is, like about it being aliens aboard your ship and you have to take them out. But that's also blown up heavily, gigantically, and it was made by one dev and that's really impressive. And it's a cheap game too. It's like, seven dollars i think the most recent example is helldivers 2 and it's a kind of small company but they have produced an absolute masterpiece and in fact the only thing that people bitch about regarding helldivers 2 is the servers and it's not because they want to shit on the company it's because they genuinely want to play the game because it's a fun co-op shooter game and that is i suppose the beauty of these big giant companies trying to abuse their size in the market that people vote with their wallets and they don't give a fuck which is such a nice attitude to see people have because it means that well, the quality of game will still go up, but it's not going to be the same companies that it's always been, which is so nice to really see some originality that isn't going to be nearly a hundred dollars flushed away for a mediocre experience. But that truly is the positive side of it. But that's about it for this video. I just wanted to kind of cover the release of Skull and Bones as well as Helldivers 2 as well which I might probably stream soon. But yeah, thank you for watching. See ya.